Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Barrels and I am back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you a review of the AMD FX 8300. No, not the 8350 or the 8370, the 8300. What is the point of this chip? Well, it comes in at a price tag of only $120. Is this chip worth your hard earned dollar? Let's talk about that. So this is the AMD FX 8300. It comes in at an MSRP of $120 and has a very compelling offer. AMD's new line of CPU Zen is scheduled to release at the end of this year, but AMD is still trying to push their older chips like most companies do. This 8300 used to be only available in China, but now recently has been made available in the United States and they're pushing it at a price tag of $120 to appeal to you budget gamers out there. This A-Core chip really has been popular amongst AMD enthusiasts because they really had had no other options, but it still is a very solid CPU and we're gonna test it and see if it still stands up in most modern day titles. So what we're gonna be doing is pairing this 8300 with an MSI RX 474 gigabyte model card, which if you haven't seen the review for that, hit the I in the top right corner and you can check that video out. But we're gonna be pairing this in my brother system that has the RX 470 with eight gigabytes of RAM, an ASRock Extreme 3 AM3 Plus motherboard, and just a normal standard Seagate hard drive that's in his system. So what we're gonna be doing is pairing this up and we're gonna be doing a couple of benchmarks. We're gonna be testing Battlefield 4, Overwatch, and Black Ops 3. And we did various settings to be able to make the best FPS performance possible and I'll explain those in the video while I go through the benchmarks. So without further ado, let's get right into those benchmarks. So in Battlefield 4, this CPU did perform admirably with an average FPS of 75, a minimum of 55, and a max of 116. That minimum does tell the story of this CPU. If we're getting below the 60 FPS threshold, it does show that there is a little bit of a bottleneck in the CPU. Nothing substantial because a 5 FPS dip really isn't that big. I was in big combat zones when doing this benchmark and it really did show that the CPU handled it very well. There wasn't very noticeable stuttering like you would think when you dip below 60. It was very fluid, it was very smooth, and there really was no issues involved with the transition. So FPS as a whole in Battlefield 4, I give a thumbs up. So this chip is a very good setup for Battlefield 4 gaming. As far as Black Ops 3 goes, I had to lower the settings to about the high preset and do a couple of changes, but really the settings were set on high. But Black Ops 3, I did get an average FPS of 90, a minimum of 71, and a max of 111, which is very high and very solid. There were some issues when first loading into the game where some textures weren't loading properly, and it was causing a lot of lag, because in a previous benchmark, I was getting an average of 83, a minimum of 13, and a max of 104. But once the game started going, the minimums did go back up to 71, and once everything was loaded into play, there were no issues at all, and the gameplay was fluid. Black Ops 3 is a poorly optimized PC port, so, you know, I mean, you can't really say much about it when it's a ported game to the PC and the optimization really isn't designed for PC. So I wouldn't blame it solely on this CPU, but it did do a pretty good job playing this very poorly optimized game. Last but certainly not least is Overwatch, where we saw the most interesting result from this CPU. When playing, we got an average FPS of 107, a minimum of 89, and a max of 137. So when we were testing this game, we ran it on the high preset. We didn't run it on Ultra Epic because we wanted to get a very solid above 60 experience. Running it on Ultra and Epic, we were getting some stutters, but nothing really substantial. You could run it on Ultra, very fine. Uh, Epic would be kind of questionable because there were more stutters than you might think. But the one key issue here is that it really does introduce a CPU bottleneck. When I mean CPU bottleneck, I mean that the CPU is holding back the RX 470, and here's my proof of it. When playing Overwatch, if you click on Task Manager and look at CPU usage, you're seeing near 80%, 90% usage, which really isn't intended of a full bottleneck, but it's so close to the point to where you couldn't do anything else to where the CPU had to use its resources because it would bog down FPS. So for example, stuff like live streaming and game recording really would not work very well for Overwatch with this 8300 because it is using most of its horsepower in this game, which Overwatch has been known to be CPU demanding. Other than that, I mean, the average FPS of 107 is really good. The RX 470 really isn't getting held back too much. It's above the 60 FPS threshold. Unless you're just an FPS hungry person who wants the most absolute FPS or are trying to play at 144 hertz, this CPU really should do fine for you as far as gaming goes. It really isn't going to do best for content creation if you're like a game recorder or game commentator. It really won't do the best for that, especially in games like Overwatch, but in other titles that are a little bit less demanding, it probably would do just fine. So overall, would I recommend this 8300? Well, it depends. If you are willing to wait for AMD Zen release, then I would 
hold your money and wait. But if you want to game now and have a budget for gaming now, or you just want a primary gaming box that's separate from your gaming rig, this FX8300 is a valuable chip. It's an awesome toy to play with also because you can just try overclocking the snot out of this thing and see exactly what kind of performance you can get. And for only $120, you're getting a really cool chip, let alone a toy to play with from AMD. But with Zen on the horizon, you know, this is just AMD's last push to try to get this thing in people's PCs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you have any comments about AMD, Zen, or FX series chips as a whole, comment down below and I'll gladly reply. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you get all these updates on when videos go live and get little teasers like this when I post pictures of this processor on Twitter so you know what content is coming. Be sure to follow us on Twitter also for other types of giveaways and surprise things that don't happen on the YouTube channel. Also follow us on Twitch for all things live streaming when we stream games and our annual Toasty Tech Live. Well, not annual our weekly toasty tech live live stream it's a really awesome live stream where me and jackson talk about tech and play video games like counter-strike global offensive competitive play so if you want to follow us on there i would greatly appreciate it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video once again be sure to hit that sub button for more content from the toasty bros and i hope you guys have a wonderful day peace out